Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about Dungeons and & Dragons, and we're specifically going to talk about, um, we're going to go deeper into this concept I've been telling you about, and I'm going to give you, give you the actionable steps that I took to land where I am with Dungeons & Dragons. So, uh, let me explain my relationship with Dungeons & Dragons. I, at this point in my life, I have completely abandoned playing Dungeons & Dragons. I don't play Dungeons & Dragons. I journey with Dungeons & Dragons. My life is a journey with Dungeons & Dragons. I journey with Dungeons & Dragons. I ride with Dungeons & Dragons. We are on a journey together. Nothing happens in Dungeons & Dragons that's significant that I'm not there. Um, and uh, and Dungeons & Dragons... And, and Scott Garibay doesn't exist without Dungeons & Dragons. They're, they're, Scott Garibay hasn't existed without Dungeons & Dragons since 1982. And Dungeons and Dragons will, and I will be with Dungeons and Dragons until they put me in a pine box. There is no Scott Garibay without Dungeons and Dragons. It's just, it is the fourth most important thing in my life. It's fundamental to my life, and it is a massive part of my identity. Now, one of my um, one of my commenters very fairly said, "Scott, you talk about all these concepts, but what are the actionable steps to do it?" Right? And that that's a very fair question, right? I want to explain something to you. The reason I never give, I, I almost never give actionable steps to do what I'm doing is who have I sold, right? I, it is, it is really fascinating to me because people keep coming back and they want to hear what I have to say about Dungeons and Dragons because I have a unique view of Dungeons and Dragons, and I think I'm I'm compelling at showing the value of looking at Dungeons and Dragons differently, and I also think a lot of the that. I also think there are important people in the world. Not a lot of people. Important people in the world. The biggest one right now is Joe Manganiola. I really think that Joe Manganiola is pretty close to where I'm at. Right? Like, he he just said it. He said, I'm having elevated conversations with people who have transformed their lives with Dungeons and & Dragons and have changed the culture they live in. That That's what, I, that's what I've been saying for four years, right? And he said it on D&D Direct with a huge rubber stamp from Hasbro. Right? Like, that... Hasbro rubber stamped what he was saying by putting it in a D&D Direct, right? And so he was just saying it flat out that, like, we're at a point, right, where, um, we're flat out. You know, Joe Manganiola is not playing Dungeons and Dragons, right? He's, he's having elevated conversations. People have used Dungeons and Dragons to transform their lives and change the culture they live in. The, the conversation is changing, right? So how do you do it? It's a very fair question. And I'm going to take the time to give steps today, right? Not because there's a bunch of people who are going to follow this step, but I'm bushwhacking, right? Like I, that's and that's another thing I've realized with Dungeons and Dragons, I'm bushwhacking a new a new way of Dungeons and Dragons, right? Like I I interact with Dungeons and Dragons in a way that no one else in the world has done before. I am following a path that, in my humble opinion, Gary Gygax set, right? And he he put it in Invisible Ink, right? And and I think if you look at it from my vantage, you can see it. Right? And I'm trying to get people to see it. But I think by giving these actionable steps that I've already taken, people can follow the path that I'm going on, right? If they choose to. Right? That's another thing, is like people get very upset about my channel, right? But the thing is, I don't keep anybody captive. There ain't nobody here that doesn't want to be here, right? Like so let's get rolling. Alright. The first actionable step I've taken is I forged my identity with Dungeon Dragons, okay? So this IRL world is the anvil. Dungeons and Dragons is the hammer. The first time I heard the hammer of Dungeons and Dragons was in 1980. Okay, and uh, and what happened was Dom and I met a, t a kid in R Racine, Wisconsin, and he said, "I own a castle." And I was like, "You don't own a castle. I know where you live. You live three, you know, you live three houses down, and that is anything but a castle." And he goes, "Nope, I, I own a castle." I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, I play Dungeons and Dragons. And in that, in Dungeons and Dragons, I am a knight and I own a castle. And I was like, what? Like, and he's like, yeah, it's a different world. I, you know, I don't live in just this world. I live in multiple worlds. And in that other world, I'm a knight and I own a castle. And I asked him all summer what the heck he was talking about. And, and that was the dong. That was the first time the hammer of Dungeons and Dragons struck me. Right? I just saw... I saw this person who didn't live in one world, and I was captivated. I, it took me two years to get my first Dungeons & Dragons basic set. It was right before the Red Box came out in 1983. So I was using the Red Booklet, 
right? I, and I and um, and that only lasted a few months. In, uh, that lasted about a year until I moved on to the Red Box, and the Red Box really transformed my life. The the Moldvay Red Box just did it, and that was the next dong, right? And I played with my brother and a couple other people, and then in high school, dong. Uh, there's a gentleman by there's a guy named Gary and a guy named Tim, and we built worlds together, like like you know like you have never seen, right? Like just incredible um, world building that happened between us, and um, and it it was then I went to to college, right? And get this, in college I played Shadowrun, dong, right? And all Shadowrun did was show me how powerful and how good. Dungeons and Dragons really was because Shadowrun was a fascinating world with the most bog awful rule system I had ever seen in my life. Right? And and I realized then how how masterful Gary really was, right? And you know, and then uh, you know, life just kept going forward. And in uh, I would say, you know, in the late nineteen nineties dong, I started uh, dungeon mastering and FLGSs and allowing open tables for anybody who was at the FLGS to come in and mixing narratives with multiple different players and then dong, right, we, we reached the early 2000s and at this point I wrote my own role playing game to beat Dungeons and Dragons and found that Gary was unbeatable uh, um, and that was my first I've written, I've, I've written two tabletop role playing games, one is published it's called Freight Chain Iron, you can, you can get it right over on uh, uh, drive through RPG for free, right? Because compared to Dungeons and Dragons, it stinks, right? I think it's good. I love it, but it's just not. It, I didn't. I didn't beat Gary, right? Like, and um, and you know, and then in the 2010s, Dong, there was you know, uh, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons with uh, a crew right here in you know a little bit south of Philadelphia. Some of the best players, some of the best dungeon masters I've I've ever seen, and it just took. My narratives, you know, my my relationships with identity, narrative, and language even higher, right? And so my and and the thing is, I have created player characters, I have created non-player characters, well over a hundred um, player characters, well over a thousand non-player characters, and now I forge my identity with parts of my favorite player characters. Part of my heart, my Mind is Beryl, this total wizard, one of my favorite player characters of all time. Uh, there's a half orc cleric in there by the name of Kynwin, who, you know, some of the words that come out of my mouth, you know, came out of his mouth, right? You know, and some of my opinions are his opinions, and some of the ways I, I process sensations are Kynwin's, right? And some of my thought patterns are Beryl, are, are you know, are Beryl's, and um, it's just. I forge my identity with Dungeons and Dragons, and so I no longer I have abandoned playing Dungeons and Dragons. I don't do it anymore, right? I journey with Dungeons and Dragons, and the first part of that, the first actual step, is you decide to forge your identity with Dungeons and Dragons. This IRL world is simply the anvil, and Dungeons and Dragons is the hammer. And I listen for the dong, right? When the hammer hits me over the anvil and I am reshaped again, right? And so that's the first actionable step, right? And and I ha I'm I'm sorry, but like if you are not ready to do that, you're not going to journey with Dungeons and Dragons, right? You're going to have the same relationship that many people have with Dungeons and Dragons where you complain about it, you skip, you know, you buy this book or you buy that book. And you complain about it more, and you think that rules are more important than narrative, and you think it's a game and not a tool, right? And so that's the first step. That's the first actual step I took to begin journeying with Dungeons and Dragons and abandon playing Dungeons and Dragons. Every single word of that is my humble opinion. What's important is when I get to hear your humble opinion when you get into the comments and send your traffic. Please consider liking and subscribing, and have a wonderful millennium.